Let's dim the sun with sulfur dioxide and uh, sulfuric acid. So sounds quite scary. So I want to look into this, look into the chemistry of this and explain to you and understand a bit more myself about what this actually means. Now, in November last year, I wrote this letter, which is to the Secretary of State for the Environment. And I asked him specifically, I explained to him the technology. I said, people are looking to let sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. I don't think it's very safe. Please, can you look at this, read this email and do something about it and not let it happen in the UK without the consent of you and others. Right, so let's talk about something I'm more interested in. Let's talk about an atom, the atom of sulfur. Okay, sulfur is a very reactive element. It has 16 electrons and it has six on the outer shell. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that six electrons on the outer shell means that the atom normally wants eight electrons. So when sulfur is let into the atmosphere, it very quickly bonds with O2, which is oxygen. Our air is made of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon. Those oxygen molecules are O2. The nitrogen molecules are N2. They're two oxygen molecules together, not one. So sulfur very quickly bonds with oxygen because the six electrons on the outer shell want two more. And those two more in the, in the two oxygen atoms bond. And you've got sulfur dioxide. If you've ever lit a match of sulfur, you see how quickly it reacts. That becomes sulfur dioxide. There's some other things in there, phosphor and stuff, but it becomes sulfur dioxide. Now, when that sulfur dioxide is released into the air, which is going to be done with this 50 or 60 million pound initiative from the government, it reacts again with oxygen to become what's called sulfur trioxide, right? So, but here, here's the key. When the sulfur trioxide reacts with water vapor. Now, you know what water is. Water is H2O. So when that water vapor in the atmosphere or the stratosphere um, reacts with sulfur trioxide, it becomes sulfuric acid. So it's H2SO4. You can hear the H2O in there and you can hear the SO3 in there plus one. So the sulfur trioxide becomes sulfuric acid. Now, after one or two years, because it's quite heavy, the sulfur trioxide, sorry, the sulfuric acid, getting confused myself there, the sulfuric acid after one or two years will fall back down to earth. Now, it could fall anywhere because once it's released in the stratosphere, which is 20 kilometers up, you could go all around the world and land anywhere. It's not just going to land straight back in, in the UK, all of it, some of it will. So obviously, these are aerosols and these aerosols, the, the sulfur, the sulfuric acid is actually what reflects the sun rays, which I can talk a little bit about if you want me to in another video, reflects the sun rays back in other directions away from the earth. And eventually that will fall back down. So you would have to do this frequently. You would have to continually put sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere because the second you stop the injections, the temperatures could just spike right back. Let's talk about the reality of this. Okay. We are talking if it's a few million tons or 10 million tons, the amount that's going to come back to Earth is going to be very small. Now, I looked at this website, Making Sunsets. This was the reason why I emailed the Secretary of State in the UK. And the owner has written down that if you drink red wine, then, you know, you're taking in sulfur dioxide. Now, this is true. And you're actually taking in more sulfur dioxide than you would breathe in. Again, this is true. But there is a huge difference to me compared to drinking sulfur dioxide in wine than inhaling sulfuric acid, H2SO4, um, inhaling it without knowing about it. There is a big difference in that because it's actually classed as a PM2.5. PM2.5 means particulate matter that's under two and a half microns. I've made many videos on PM2.5 and measured the PM2.5 in London, so I can tell you all about it. Now, this is classed as a particulate matter 2.5. It's actually quite a bit smaller, so it's kind of nuanced. So the PM 2.5, you would inhale. Now, here's the thing. It will be a tiny, tiny amount. Okay, when this falls back down to Earth, the amount that you're supposed to have in the atmosphere is five micrograms, five one millionths of a gram per cubic meter of air. Kind of like surface level sulfate, we would call it. Now, a, a model that I read suggests that around 0.1 micrograms per meter cubed of space there will be of, of this left over 
from the balloons or the planes that leave this in the atmosphere. But that's a very small amount. You are going to breathe in more from matches. You're going to breathe in more from cars. Um, but I do think it could still add. Let's just say there's one microgram is added based on what the government put into the stratosphere. You could still add 20, 10, 10 or 20 percent of the sulfur dioxide and the sulfuric acid. You could increase what's in the air by 5, 10 percent. So it's not great, in my opinion. And I just don't think that the trade off of dimming the sun when the sun isn't that bright in England anyway. You know, the UV index here today in Mexico is 15. Um, I looked at the UV index in the UK and it's two. And we're talking about reflecting those ultraviolet rays. Um, so my issue is that this just isn't clearly stated by the government. They just say, we're going to dim the sun. Everybody, I don't know if they said that or somebody else said that, but it's going to cause a lot of confusion and worry. And you could just create a, I was going to say create, a, I could create an on-chain app for free and let everybody vote, but you can do that on Twitter. You could just create a vote on Twitter. Do you want, to, do you want this to happen or not? Um, and I just think it being done without the consent of the British population and then messing with nature, which has all been done before, all sounds a bit familiar to me. Is just uh, not the best way to go about it.